Okay, let's hope third time's a charm here. I had to I had to delete a video about my starter deck uh, for my Yu-Gi-Oh, and I might redo that later, uh, maybe tomorrow. But anyway, I wanted to get this out of the way as quickly as I could, because I don't know if I'm going to get interrupted by my mom again like I was yesterday. I wanted to give you guys a bit of an overview and review of the uh, Tobo Graphic 16, as well as give you guys a bit of a history lesson from my point of view uh, and my own personal experience. You see, uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, when we were starting to slowly get into that 16-bit error, that 16-bit 16 16-bit console error, console error, if you will. We knew at the, at that time we had two major competitors. We had or two major choices. We had Nintendo and we had Sega, and they were butting heads. Sega decided to take the leap and try to basically surpass Nintendo by you know entering into that 16-bit era, basically taking essentially what would be like arcade games that you would play at the arcade and putting them on cartridges that you could play at home. That's essentially what they were doing. And Nintendo, when this was happening, was still slowly trying to transition towards that. They were working on it. Uh, some of the games were borderline more around 12-bit, maybe 14-bit at times because, you know, you could, you could see the difference in graphics and all that even on an, on an NES cartridge in, played on an NES system. You could see the difference. But still, even with that, Nintendo would come about a year or so after Sega would come into the 16-bit era, about a year or so after Nintendo would enter as well with the Super Nintendo. And that was around late 90, 91, somewhere around that time frame. And again, like I said, they would enter the 16-bit the era there, and would kind of start to tr take away a bit of that lead, a little bit of that cash flow that was going towards Sega, they would be taking a, a lot, they would be taking a huge chunk out of it because sometimes their 16-bit games seemed more far superior in quality all around from graphics to sound and everything to what Sega was offering. But still, Sega would still be grabbing their fair share, and if not trying to keep the lead that they had when it came to the console wars. But in between all that, you had a few consoles trying to, you know, just jump out of nowhere, just come out of nowhere and take a grasp of that audience away and say, hey, we're now the, we're now the kings of the bit wars. We're now the kings of the console wars. You know, you had Atari trying to do that with the Jaguar. You know, trying to say now we're 64 bits when it was not really, you know, that 64 as it should have been. But then you have NEC. And NEC, along with Hudson Soft, introduced us to the TurboGrafx 16 around the same time Sega was bringing out the Sega Genesis Flash Mega Drive uh, to, the, to the world. So they were introducing us all to this, and NEC basically saw a chance to be that alternative to Sega as well as to Nintendo, and be more of an affordable alternative to allow people that really couldn't spend the money that was necessary to have a Sega Genesis, or even still have a Nintendo, and maybe even a Super Nintendo, they said, you know what, we're going to make it easier for you guys. Here's the uh, TurboGrafx-16, the PC Engine, if you will. And guess what? It's a lot less than what you'd be paying for a Genesis or a Nintendo and even a Super Nintendo. And how much was it going for? Would you believe it was going for $99? Yeah, that's what it was right off the bat. $99 for this. For the Turbo Graphic 
16. That, that's initially what it was. $99. And what, what made it cheap, I think, what made it more affordable to sell and more appealing, I guess, in, from a financial standpoint, was unlike the NES, which came with two of these, as well as a Zappa gun, and the same with the Sega Genesis, I think, that also came with two controllers. It only came with one controller, and that was it. You would have to go out and buy the peripherals, the accessories, if you will, to do multiplayer. Like, you would have to get a... Uh, I think it was called a Turbo Pad or Turbo Duo, something like that, to where you would have to connect this multiplayer uh, peripheral to the front of your Turbo Graphics and then connect your Turbo Graphics controllers to it. Now, the other thing that made it more affordable as well was the fact that it, well, it just came with the basics. And also what made it affordable was the fact that the, the games were made on cards. And that was a first. This was basically like the, like the first step towards making games more easier and affordable to have. Now, for me, personally, as a kid at the time, when I saw the commercials for this, I just wanted to get it. I, I just did. And I don't know if, it, if I had pointed it out to my parents or not, but when I saw the price range for it, and I pointed out how much it was, and I think even my sisters helped out, I knew eventually I was going to probably get one, maybe, maybe not. But I put down, I was, I think, what, 10, 11 years, I was 11 years old. I still believed in the guy in the red suit, if you know what I mean. I'm not saying he's not real for any kids that are watching. I'm not saying he's not real. Uh, but still, I believed, if you will. And I put down on my Christmas wish, Graphic 16 And lo and behold, on Christmas morning, 1990, in Waterford, California, I got a Graphic 16 I did. And I loved playing it. My sisters loved playing it. It was fun. And I remember the games I got were, of course, what I just showed you, Keith Courage, and World Class Baseball. I still have to buy World Class Baseball to kind of make it like it used to be, in a sense. <laughs> but I had Keith Courage and I had World Class Baseball. Keith Courage actually came packaged with the system. And this is before they acquired Bonk, Bonkman as sort of the mascot. But to me, when I played the Turbo Graphics, I just enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And unfortunately, through all the moves and stuff that me and my family went through, uh, from city to city sometimes, and state to state, and some of the per personal problems as well, I can't really remember what happened to the Turbo Graphics that we had. I, I don't remember if it got destroyed, if it got given away, if it was given away. I can't really remember. But ever since then, there has been a part of me that's been wanting to get back my Turbo Graphics system. A part of me that's been saying that was your system. You need to get it back somehow. Find a way to do it. And times, and from the times I lived in Kansas to now, I've looked through eBay, Amazon, everywhere. And like I mentioned at the beginning, anytime I would look on Amazon, especially in the marketplace, the only way I could get the Turbo Graphics at the price that I paid for is on this one was only if it was just the console. No wires, no games, no controllers. Or if it was just the console, no controllers. I mean, it was just the console and a controller, no wires, no nothing. And it's like God said, look, 
you're going to find that opportunity. The opportunity is coming. So finally, I looked in the marketplace, just out of curiosity's sake, and lo and behold, one of the more recent uh, partners with Amazon in the marketplace, uh, Daniel Cooklin or something like that, I can't pronounce his name correctly, I apologize, had put a complete TurboGrafx system out for 119 I looked at that, I was like, am I seeing things, complete setup? Because sometimes people will say that just to lure you in. So I looked at the details, and he, everything he said was there. Everything he needed to say was there. He said, uh, it comes complete. They're even going to include a game, which they did, which was um, Victory Run, which is actually pretty fun. I mean, it's kind of like an... Uh, I mean, I've played a little bit of that, and it feels like you're going up and you're going down at times on it. It's really fun uh, to play. So I looked at that. So I looked at it, and I said, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on this, see what happens. He says he's cleaned up the system, fixed, you know, fixed it up as best he could, basically cleaned it, tested it out. And, well, I decided to take a chance on it, and lo and behold, thank you, Daniel. You're watching. I ended up getting a decently function Turbo Graphics 16, just like back in the old days, and I am happy to have it back. I mean, you people don't know how much that this means for me to have this back in my in my possession again. It, it, it's just something because here's the thing: my fam, me, me and my siblings, me and my sisters would always get something special, either for our birthdays or for Christmas. I remember for my sister, my second older sister's birthday, she ended up getting the NES. I remember for my older sister's birthday, she ended up, on Christmas, she ended up getting, no, it was her birthday, she ended up getting the Game Boy. So, how do they equal that out for me? They see I wanted the Turbo Graphics, I ended up getting the Turbo Graphics. So, to me, that's how much it means to me. Because it was specifically given to me. And I remember Christmas morning, it said to Brian from Santa to get my drift. It said to Brian. So I opened it up, and that's what it was. It was the Tobo Graphic 16. And I've never forgotten that. Never forgotten that. And that is why I'm happy to have it back. Even if I had to purchase... Uh, Keith Courage individually on its own. I wanted to have the game that I got with it initially when I got the system as well. So, overall, the Turbo Graphics 16 is definitely worth having, and it's definitely a great system. And it was definitely a great alternative, especially during those console wars between Sega and Nintendo, especially at the beginning of the 16-bit era. And if you were fortunate enough to have the CD attachment as well, then hey, you know, you, you had even more uh, of an alternative to that 16-bit era. In fact, they were the first to do the CDs before Sega did. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think even before Atari did. So, but yeah, it's, it's just a system that I've always held dear to my, always held dear to me, and I'm just happy to have it back. And I can't really say any more about it. And if I'm any of you out there, if you can, try finding try finding a cheap Turbo Graphics. Make sure it's complete. Because if you try to get it initially right off Amazon, you're going to be paying a whole chunk of money for it. So again, my, my, my advice, try to find one that's complete. Maybe find one that's complete in box at a decent price. And I guarantee you, you will not regret it. So that's all I'm going to say on my uh, overview and historical over my own personal uh, overview as well as just kind of giving you a bit of history on the system and I thank you all for watching and I do recommend if you can afford one try to find it at a decent price you won't regret it comment below